There's an object sitting in museums across Europe that has stumped archaeologists for over a century. Despite decades of research and over 100 examples discovered, no one knows what it does. Over the past two centuries, these strange bronze devices have been unearthed from Roman sites stretching from Britain to Hungary, each one a 12-sided puzzle of pentagonal faces, perfectly circular holes, and knobs at every corner. They're too precise to be decorative, too standardized to be random, and yet not a single ancient text ever mentions them. Today, we're going to follow the clues, where they were found, how they were made, and what modern experiments reveal, and see if we can get any closer to understanding what this ancient technology was actually for. In 1739, a farmer in Hertfordshire, England, made a discovery that would puzzle scholars for the next three centuries. He was digging in his field when his shovel struck something metallic. Brushing away the dirt, he uncovered a strange bronze object about the size of a tennis ball. It was geometric, almost alien in its precision. Twelve flat faces, each face pierced with a circular hole. Small knobs protruding from every corner. He had no idea what it was. Neither did the antiquarians he showed it to. Neither did the scholars at Oxford. They catalogued it, sketched it, and essentially shrugged. But here's the thing that should concern us. Since that first discovery, we've found over 130 more, scattered across Britain, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, all of them dating to the Roman Empire, somewhere between the 2nd and 4th centuries AD. We've uncovered the secrets of Egyptian tombs. We've translated dead languages. But this object, found by the dozens, made by one of history's most documented civilizations, remains completely inexplicable. It's called a Roman dodecahedron. And before we go any further, you need to understand just how bizarre this situation actually is. The Romans wrote about everything. We have Roman manuals on farming, warfare, architecture, plumbing, cooking, medicine, philosophy, poetry, even how to organize your personal library. Marcus Terentius Varro wrote an entire encyclopedia covering all Roman knowledge. Pliny the Elder compiled a natural history with 37 volumes covering thousands of topics. The Romans were obsessive documentarians. But dodecahedra? Not one mention. Not in any text. Not in any letter. Not in any inventory. Not even graffiti. The first serious theory came in the 1800s. Scholars looked at those graduated holes and thought, measuring device. Different sized holes could gauge the diameter of objects, maybe for standardizing military equipment. Roman legions were famous for standardization. Except we have actual Roman measuring devices. Lots of them. They look nothing like dodecahedra. Roman military manuals describe equipment standards and how to measure them. Dodecahedra never come up. Someone suggested it was a surveying instrument you'd sight through the different holes to measure angles or distances. But again, we have Roman surveying instruments, the groma, the corobates, the dioptra. These are well documented in both finds and texts. Roman surveyors wrote treatises on their work. No mention of Roman dodecahedra. But before we go on to the next section, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to like and subscribe. It's completely free and helps me out a ton in the algorithm. By the mid 20th century, researchers were getting creative. One French scholar proposed it was an agricultural calendar device. You hold it up at sunrise or sunset, and sunlight through the different holes would tell you when to plant crops. Researchers built replicas and tried it, and it sort of works. If you know exactly which hole to use, exactly where to stand, exactly how to orient it. But Roman farmers had calendars. They watched the stars. They observed nature. Why would they need an expensive bronze astronomical computer when they could just, you know, remember that you plant grain in October? Here's where the mystery gets truly weird. Let's look at where these objects have been found. Some dodecahedra were discovered in coin hoards, buried with valuables. Others turned up near military forts. Some in civilian homes one in a grave. If these were tools for a specific trade, we'd expect clustering. But dodecahedra appear in completely unrelated contexts. 
rich burials and trash pits, military installations and civilian homes. What kind of object transcends all boundaries like that? In the 1980s, someone suggested religious artifact. Maybe the 12 faces represent the zodiac. The knobs represent celestial bodies. It's used in rituals we no longer understand. This is actually compelling. The Romans had mystery religions. Mithraism was huge, especially among soldiers. These were secret societies with knowledge that was never written down. Everything was oral tradition. When Christianity became official in the fourth century, these mystery cults were suppressed. When the last initiated member died, all that secret knowledge died with them. So maybe dodecahedra were ritual objects whose purpose was deliberately kept secret. But here's the problem. Christian writers in the fourth and fifth centuries loved documenting pagan practices to condemn them. They described rituals, objects, and beliefs in gleeful, mocking detail. Yet nobody mentions dodecahedra, not once. In 1995, a researcher proposed something unexpected. It's a knitting tool. You use it to make gloves through a technique called nalbinding or finger knitting. You stretch yarn across the holes to create tubes of different diameters. The different sized holes make different sized fingers. Historical reenactors tried this. They made actual gloves using dodecahedron replicas. It legitimately works. You can knit with these things. But why? The Romans had knitting needles. They had weaving tools. They had simple, cheap implements for making textiles. Why cast an expensive bronze polyhedron when wooden pegs would accomplish the same thing? Unless, someone argued, it was a status symbol. Rich women showing off their wealth by knitting with elaborate bronze tools. Except most dodecahedra show no wear patterns consistent with fiber arts, no scratches from yarn, no polishing from repeated handling in the specific ways knitting would require. Some are pristine, as if never used. Others show damage, but random damage, not wear from a specific function. In the early 2000s, someone suggested they were candle holders. The knobs help them stand upright. You stick candles through the holes, different sized holes for different sized candles. Except Roman candle holders looked completely different. We have thousands of them. Oil lamps were more common anyway. And why would you need 12 candle positions on one holder? Romans weren't lighting 12 candles simultaneously on a regular basis. That's an absurd amount of light and expense. Every theory has the same problem. It sort of works until you think about it for more than five minutes, then it falls apart. Some researchers have pointed to the cost and skill required to make these objects as a clue. Bronze was expensive. Casting a hollow dodecahedron with precise geometry and decorative knobs took real metalworking expertise. It's an interesting idea. It would explain the variation in quality. Some craftspeople were more skilled than others. It would explain why people kept them, even buried them, with valuables. They represented professional achievement, proof of mastery. But it doesn't explain the geographic pattern. Why only the northern provinces? Why not in Italy? where we know craft guilds existed and thrived. And if these were just portfolio pieces, why this specific shape? And there are dozens more theories, literally dozens. Over the centuries, people have suggested dodecahedra or dice for gambling, though they don't roll well and aren't weighted evenly. Fortune-telling devices, throwing them like mystical dice to read the future. Children's toys, though that seems wasteful for expensive bronze. Weights for fishing nets, heads of ceremonial scepters, especially after one was found in a grave, next to what might have been a staff. What's fascinating is how many of these theories are mutually contradictory. It can't simultaneously be a children's toy and a precision surveying instrument. It can't be a sacred religious object and also a practical farming tool. It can't be deliberately mysterious and also everyday and unremarkable. Yet researchers keep proposing new ideas because the alternative is admitting defeat. If you enjoyed this video, comment down below your own theories. And definitely watch this other video of mine as well. YouTube says you'll love it.